Welcome, everybody, to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks. Thank you for listening to the show. Coming at you live from Lexington, Kentucky. It is officially December, the last month of 2017. Hard to believe. I remember sitting down doing this episode this time last year, talking about the end of 2016. Years just fly by. December, it's officially the holiday time. Uh, Everybody, I hope they had a great Thanksgiving. And Christmas is now officially underway. Black Friday shopping, for me, was a success. I got to experience... Uh, Black Friday shopping at Walmart. I had been Black Friday shopping before, but never went to Walmart. That is the place where you go where you are really going to run into the yahoos and really going to get into the thick of it of Black Friday. People would be pushing you out of the way. People are running over you with their shopping carts trying to save $20, $30. Um, Even when you got the things that you needed, you were going to be standing in line two and a half, three hours. Saw a couple fights in Walmart. One in particular was due to a guy cutting line. This was a grown man. He cut line, and another grown man pulled the guy by his shoulder and asked him what he was doing. He said that he was in line, and then before you knew it, they were swinging at each other because one claimed that they cut line, one claimed that he didn't, and it was just a mess. Some of the things I got, I got a fire stick for $25. A fire stick originally supposed to be like 50, 60 bucks. I love the fire stick. They're, they say that you can jailbreak those things by getting on YouTube and following instructions to a video, but I've yet to find one uh, to jailbreak uh, my fire break, my fire stick. So I'm still having to pay for Hulu, Netflix, and all that good stuff on there. But got a fire stick, got WWE 2K17 or 2K18. Uh, for thirty bucks, which which is great because games, I mean, dang, they're expensive, like seventy bucks if you buy it straight off the market. But anyway, went to the UK football game last weekend. They played the University of Louisville in the Governors Cup. The Cardinals beat the Cats forty four to seventeen, which now makes the Cardinals eight and four and the Wildcats seven and five. That still makes Kentucky bowl eligible. Their bowl has not been announced. And I hope to have a whole podcast dedicated to UK football uh, to discuss the entire season coming up soon. That's in the works. But um, Louisville, they dominated Kentucky really the entire game. you got to remember, they do have Heisman Trophy winner Lamar Jackson as their quarterback for the cards. And uh, the Cats just really couldn't compare this year to the Cardinals and the Governor's Cup. You know, UK beat them last year, but UK, but Louisville came in and got their revenge at Kroger Field against the Cats by beating them. Actually, not just beating them, kicking their butt all over the field. But it makes people wonder if Kentucky is still on the up climb. Is Kentucky program still moving forward? And people have mixed emotions they have mixed feelings with it they're happy that we're seven and five they're happy that we've won seven games that we're going to a bowl but I don't think people are really satisfied with the quality of our wins there are some games that we should have won that we lost Mississippi uh, I'm sorry Ole Miss was a game that we let get away from us Uh, I don't think people appreciate getting uh, beat as bad as we did against the Cards Uh, I don't think people appreciate us getting beat as bad as we did against Mississippi State because when we lose, when Kentucky loses, it seems like it's always by a ton. Georgia's beat us by over 20. Louisville beat us by over 20. Um, Ole Miss barely beat us, but again, that was a game that we should have won. And we should have won Florida, the Florida game this year on their down year. This would have been the year to beat Florida. Uh, and because of in-game management and the lack of coaching structure, UK lost to Florida. I don't know. What frustrates me the most about Mark Stoops is really player development. He has all of this talent on his team, and it just appears that he's not doing anything with his talent. He can't develop them into being the best that they can become. Uh, You know, you do have Steven Johnson. You do have Benny Snell who have thrived at Kentucky as players. But what about the rest of them? 
Look at Damian Harris. He plays for Alabama. He was from Kentucky. He is actually from Eastern Kentucky in Richmond. And he accepted a scholarship at Alabama to play football, turned down Kentucky, and now he's thriving at Alabama. And he's probably going to go first, second round of the NFL draft as a running back. And it makes me wonder if Damian Harris would have went to Kentucky and played for Mark Stoops, would Damian Harris even be considered in the draft? Because Mark Stoops has a very poor record of developing players. I mean, you can look at his NFL draft history. It's very weak. It's very weak. But uh, that puts a, you know, that puts a big ribbon on the regular season of Kentucky football. We're just waiting to see what bowl game that they're going to go to. Uh, most sources say it's going to be the Music City Bowl down in Nashville, Tennessee. Don't know who they're going to be playing against. I've heard a couple teams. Uh, one in particular is WVU. I would love to see that game. I think it would be a great matchup, but we'll have to see. The atmosphere at Kroger Field when I went to Louisville was pretty weak. There was nobody there that was excited. You know, this, it's a stadium that uh, holds, what, 60, 65,000 people. There was lucky if there was 45,000 people there at that stadium. To be a rival game like UK-Louisville, to be the last game of the season, to be the Governor's Cup – the crowd was very weak, and I was very disappointed. And it just goes back to me saying that fans have those mixed feelings about what they think about Mark Stoops. I've been rough on Stoops throughout the years. I don't think that he is the right man to be at Kentucky. I don't think he is really qualified to be a head coach in the SEC. Uh, I think Stoops, he needs to keep learning. He needs to... Uh, improve on his in-game coaching abilities. He's a defensive mind coach, and his defense is the weakest part of his entire team. So I don't know what Stoops needs to do. I don't know if he would succeed better as a head coach at a lower level. I'm, when I say lower level, I mean a lower conference. Or if he should go back to a major program and just be a defensive coach. I don't know. I'm going to give Stoops a bye on this season. I think he did pretty decent. He won seven games. I think if you win seven games and you go to a bowl, I think that you can't be too hard on the guy. Seven games is not bad, especially for Kentucky football. Now, to really impress me, Mark Stoops, if you really want to impress me, you need to win that bowl game. You need to win that bowl game. This is your... Fifth year with Kentucky. Fifth year. It's time to win a bow. You've been to one to get people on your side and to get people believing in you. You need to win seven games, which you have. You need to go to a bow, which you are. But you need to win this bow. I think if you win this bow, I think people are really going to get behind you. And you're going to need it for next season. Next season is going to be a whole new schedule, uh, a whole new a schedule of playing loaded SEC teams, and it's just going to be a different season. Florida's going to look different. South Carolina's going to look different. I believe we got Texas A&M on the schedule next year. So, Stoops, you need to get it together. Uh, switching gears to basketball, Kentucky plays Harvard University on Saturday. Uh, actually, today, as I record the podcast, they're, they play them at 3.30 on ESPN. Harvard, they always have a decent team. Uh, they seem to have it together. They seem to really focus on fundamentals of basketball. And uh, you've got a bunch of, which doesn't surprise people. I mean, it's Harvard. They're all about education and learning and doing things really the hard way. And basketball to them is just playing the fundamentals of the game. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how Kentucky holds up against the Harvard Crimson. It's at Rupp. You know, Cal hardly loses at Rupp. He's got an astonishing record at Rupp Arena. I think he's only lost maybe five games in his entire uh, eight and a half years at Rupp. But um, Kentucky, I believe, they're going to be okay. I really do. I think that Kentucky is going to beat the Harvard, the Harvard Crimson. Kentucky right now is six and one, and uh, if they beat Harvard, it will put them to seven and one. So Kentucky, Kentucky's doing okay. Kentucky basketball, 
Uh, there'll be more to come after the game to talk about that. But a lot to get to, a lot going on in the world. I really don't know what to say about this. I mean, I turn on the TV. I don't know who anybody is anymore. Everybody that I grew up watching is no longer on television. This sexual harassment stuff has been mind-boggling. So many people have went down from it. So many people have come forward saying these people have sexually harassed them, and now they are fired from their jobs, and they're no longer on television, just like that. Uh, you know, it starts all the way back from Bill Cosby and and then to uh, Harvey Weinstein, then Kevin Spacey, and then now they're saying people like Charlie Rose and Matt Lauer have sexually harassed people and they were fired. Think about this. Matt Lauer, who has been on Today, the show Today, for the last 20 years, every morning people have woke up with him. He is no longer on television because... A woman came forward and said that she had been sexually harassed. In less than a 24-hour investigation, Matt Lauer was fired from his job as the head anchor of the NBC hit morning show Today. All of these things that have been coming out about Matt Lauer since then, so many things have been coming in development saying that he was just such a perv. And man, he, he really was a creepy dude. And he was the last person to to have done these things in a lot of people's minds. Matt Lowry was that guy that people used to go to to talk about things like sexual harassment. I mean, Charlie Rose, when he announced that he had HIV, he wanted Matt Lauer to do the interview. Matt Lauer was just that guy that everybody kind of respected in the media. But so many things have come forward about him. They said that he had a button at his desk that he could push and it would automatically lock his door. He has made several inappropriate passes to women, grabbing their butts, uh, telling them they look very uh, sexy in their outfits. And um, a lot of, he's he had uh, sex toys in his office and he told some women what he would like to do to them with those sex toys. And he sexually harassed all of these women. And they say now that they have been looking into him for the last year or so. And now that this woman has came forward, it was just so odd that they fired Matt Lauer after after 24 hours of investigation, but they made the right call apparently because apparently it was true because Matt Lauer has pretty much admitted to doing this. He says that not all of it is true, but a lot of it is enough for him to be ashamed of. And I agree with him. I, I believe him. I, I don't think a lot of the stuff that is being said is probably 100% accurate. And I think that every little thing now that he has ever done will be taken out of context. Even if he, if he, Even if it was an honest little flirt, it will be taken out of context. So I do believe him on that. But I do think that he did a lot of the things that people have said he has done because he says it's enough to be ashamed of and he's very sorry. And... He's out of a job. He's now sued NBC for $30 million, wanting uh, the rest of his money paid out to him from his contract. But he got fired for cause. So I'm going to say good luck getting that, Matt Lauer. He had a heck of a career. He is a TV legend. Matt Lauer, 20 years on today, he covered a lot of stories. He's interviewed a lot of people, politicians, celebrities, uh, just infamous people, famous people. Matt Lauer has done it all, and he's done a lot of great work, good coverage, and he's talented at what he does. So in some ways, you look at it from a professional standpoint, uh, his career has now been destroyed. He'll never work again. Even if he disappears, he's not. who's going to take a chance on hi hiring a guy who sexually harassed women? It's just not going to happen. So... Um, a salute to his career. It was a great career, but uh, it's unfortunate what he did. Uh, he's what a perv. That's who does that. Who has the opportunity that Matt Lauer has, and then waste it on sexually harassing women, especially when you're married and he's married with kids. I mean, it was a mistake that he did, and uh, he he paid for it. And Charlie Rose, another legend, another TV icon, gone. Charlie Rose is that guy that people used to sit down with one-on-one -on -one at the table in a dark room and just talk. Charlie Rose would ask guests and had these amazing interviews. 
and he was he's an old man and now he has been fired as well because he sexually harassed uh, women as well. Apparently there were stories of him like taking off his pants in front of women. All kinds of crazy stuff, man. So many perverts out there in show business. And it's interesting how these sexual harassment allegations have really just rocked the entertainment industry. I mean, if you ever wanted to force a person out the door... You could take a sexual harassment, even rumor, and run with it right now. I mean, Ryan Seacrest, if somebody really, really wanted him gone, somebody over his head, maybe at NBC Universal or maybe at E, somebody just didn't like Ryan Seacrest and just wanted him fired. It's hard to fire somebody when they're under contract. I mean, you really have to fire them for a good cause. But in today's society... If he gets a sexual harassment rumor about him, if that guy really wanted him gone that was above him, he could fire him. But, uh, and it's interesting because Ryan Seacrest, in fact, does have a sexual harassment uh, rumor against him. They, uh, a woman uh, has come forward saying that Ryan Seacrest was inappropriate with her in 2008 when he was working with her at E. Ryan Seacrest, of course, has denied the allegations He's the not him. He says that it's absolutely not true. He respects all women. He says that he, uh, it's, it's him to the core to respect women. And I actually, honestly, I believe him. Because this woman said that she would keep the story quiet if Seacrest would pay her $10 million. And Seacrest and his lawyer said absolutely not and has uh, basically... Uh, They've hired a team to get put together a team, and they are fighting this uh, case. But my point is if somebody at E really wanted Ryan Seacrest gone, they could just take the rumor and run with it. I really do think that. They can just say, you know what, we're not going to have this uh, publicity. I mean, in, in fact, even if they don't want to – even if they don't want to fire him, they can get him off TV at least and suspend them without pay when something like this is going on. But – Seacrest apparently has people behind him. I say his whole uh, team is behind him. Seacrest is is a successful person. Uh, If I had Seacrest working under me, I would keep him. I mean, I wouldn't let a sexual harassment rumor get him fired. Now, if he sexually harassed women, yes, I would fire him. But I wouldn't let the rumor stop him from working. He's a good worker. I mean, he's, he's successful. I think about all the things that would fall if Ron Seacrest fell. Uh, keeping up with the Kardashians would go under. That's Seacrest's show. Uh, the the um, E carpet. He he does the E red carpet. He produces that show, puts that on, does all the pre interviews for that. American Idol. Uh, would it be the same without Seacrest? Uh, Kelly and Ryan, the morning show. Kelly Ripa would pretty much. She would definitely be off TV if she went through another host. Nobody wants to go through that again. We're sick of Kelly Ripa as it is. So if we had to go another solo tenure with Kelly Ripa, she's not going to last. So all of these things would fall if Ryan Seacrest fell from his throne in Hollywood. So the person that is over Seacrest doesn't want him gone. Because why would you? Look at look at his success. Whew. But people on TV that we've grown up with are no longer on TV and it's going to be so fascinating to see how all of this unravels because there will be more people there will be more people to come out against this there will be women who get accused of it speaking of Kelly Ripa she could be accused Oprah could be accused Ellen it it could come out you know it would be interesting to see Ellen in a uh in a, under a sexual harassment suit because she's a lesbian. Uh, I'm sure that she flirts with other women at her company. Uh, there, there's probably some real feisty women like, uh, what's that woman, Wendy Williams. You know, definitely on her show, she's a feisty uh, woman. So maybe behind the scenes, she's the same way. Maybe she sexually harassed somebody. 
there could be stories of women in entertainment coming out uh, that they have sexually harassed people. Men might come forward or women could come forward and say that they've been sexually harassed by other women. It's not just the men that uh, do this. Men are, are, women are not the only victims. Men can be victims of this too. I think that, hear me out here. Let's say that a man is working with this woman and this woman is his boss. And this boss becomes attracted to her employee and she wants to sleep with him. So she propositions him and tells him that he could go far in the company if he sleeps with her and if he don't sleep with her, um, you know, things could get bad for him. That's sexual harassment. Or let's just say that she propositions him and says that, hey, I could, uh, or let's say she don't say anything. She propositions him, he turns her down, and then from then on out, she's pissed off at him, so she makes his life a living hell while he's working for her. That could be sexual harassment. I'm telling you it happens, and we're going to see a lot of it come out, and not even in entertainment. If, if there's any guys out there who have been sexually harassed in the workplace, it happens. People don't think it happens to guys because the people are always under the misconception about guys that guys don't mind uh, getting hit on, which is true. We don't. Just like women, we don't care that we get hit on. We actually like it. It feeds our ego. It flatters us. But there's a, there is a fine line there with guys about getting hit on in sexual harassment. Getting hit on is fine. We're fine. But if we get hit on and you know we don't reciprocate with it or we get propositioned and we don't follow through on it and in return we get treated differently because of our decision not to sleep with them or flirt back, that is sexual harassment. So... There are guys out there who get it every day in the workforce, and it should come to light more. And I challenge guys to come forward if that happens, because it's not just the women that are victims. You know, they're making men look like creeps, and a lot of men are creeps, but there are a lot of, there's millions of men that aren't, okay? There's millions that are and there's millions that's not. So I just, uh, I encourage men to come forward if they have been sexually harassed. I want to give a shout out really quick to Mike Golick and Mike Greenberg, the long running hosts of the radio morning show, Mike and Mike. They had their last show this morning and what a run. It was 18 years on the air. It's been on since 1999 and those two proved everybody wrong. Nobody could. It's rare when two people can sit beside of each other on a radio show for that long and talk about sports. Um, you know, so it was an end of an era for sports radio. They were definitely two of the most iconic people ever to do sports radio. And they had their last show. I was never a listener of Mike and Mike, and I don't mean that in any disrespectful way. I just I uh, never listened to them, but I just so happened to have it on the radio this morning, and they said, this is our last show. So I picked up my phone, and I Googled it to see if this was some kind of joke, and I, all these articles popped up that uh, it had been announced that the show was ending, and the two kind of fell out uh, over this, apparently, when they found out the show was ending. And I don't know all the details, because I'm just now kind of reading up on this whole story, but um, – you know, they both seem like that they have future plans for themselves to kind of branch off individually. So uh, the, the best of luck to them, guys. Uh, congratulations, and you guys are definitely two iconic figures that will definitely go into the Radio Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for listening to the show. It's always a pleasure to have you tune in and listen. It's always a pleasure to do the show. I'm Adam Banks. This has been Off the Cuff. We will see you in the next episode. Love is the best place to find the lovers of the bar is where I go. Mm-hmm. Me and my friends at the table doing shots, tripping fast, and then we talk slow. Mm-hmm. Come over and start up a conversation with just me, and trust me, I'll give it a chance. Now take my hands.